Professor Diane Gramala is a Canada Research Chair. She studies the ways in which advances in technologies can help people who suffer from chronic pain. Dr. Gramala heads the Transforming Pain Research Group with collaborators from across Canada and the United States. I've been looking at the intersection of chronic pain and new technologies for the past 25 years. And I didn't plan to do that though. Um, it was a matter of circumstance or fate, if you will. My interest began when I was working at Apple Computer in the 1980s. And my job there wasn't just to design new technologies, but really to think about how an ordinary, everyday person could use computer technologies, ranging from the very first multimedia application to intelligent agents. So it was really a job of dreaming what could be. And at the same time, I started having symptoms of um, a persistent or chronic pain um, that's followed me ever since. One in five North Americans are estimated to have chronic pain. That's a conservative estimate. Although the expression of pain is affected by one's culture, experts believe that this estimate is similar in so-called developed countries. Pain isn't always an enemy. It is essential to life. It is a warning system that tells us something is threatening us, that something is wrong. Chronic pain isn't regular pain, though. Chronic pain lasts longer than six months. It often lasts a lifetime. Chronic pain is different from other pain. It is not a symptom, but a systemic dysfunction, not unlike arthritis or multiple sclerosis. Researchers believe chronic pain is an overall hypersensitivity where our nervous system goes into a permanent overdrive. In 1995, researchers discovered something surprising. Immersive virtual reality proved to be more effective than opioids, medicines that humans have used for 6,000 years because they are the best for treating pain. This was remarkable. It wasn't just because people were distracted by new technology. Video games, for instance, weren't very effective. Only VR was effective because it so strongly integrates the human senses with technology in a tight feedback loop. Of course, this was a small study, and many were understandably skeptical. But over the past decade, immersive VR has proven again and again to be more effective than opioids, drugs like morphine, hydrocodone, and oxycodone. Immediately, the potential for dealing with issues like dependency and addiction became obvious. As compelling as it is, this research into using immersive VR as a form of analgesic, or pain reliever, has been limited to short-term or acute pain. The research work you will see here is unique in its focus on long-term chronic pain. The Meditation Chamber is an innovative synthesis of VR and biofeedback technologies. A vocal coach helps people to learn how to do progressive muscle relaxation exercises and how to meditate. As the person reaches deeper levels of meditation, their physiological changes monitored by the biofeedback technology, changes the visuals and the sound. For instance, as a person breathes, the 3D jellyfish breathe in tandem. So rather than looking at a traditional abstract sine wave, of a biofeedback signal, people feel as if the world they are immersed in changes as their physiology changes as they meditate. Of course, technology isn't necessary for learning how to meditate. However, we have found that biofeedback plus VR helps people to learn faster with more confidence and with more enthusiasm. Originally tested on over 400 people, the meditation chamber is now used in over 20 hospitals and clinics worldwide. Meditation is widely accepted by pain physicians as a very useful tool for managing chronic pain, stress, and a host of other chronic conditions. 
During deep meditation, mental and physiological processes calm down, and this effect lingers. In addition, meditators learn to listen closely to their minds and bodies. By becoming mindful in this way, meditators can reduce their experience of both their chronic pain and the stress it brings on. Meditation is not simply sitting quietly. It is an intensive skill that is most effective when it is practiced regularly. The virtual meditative walk is a work in progress. Building on the meditation chamber, this research addresses an important aspect for those who suffer from chronic pain, mobility. Because it often hurts to exercise or remain active, people who have chronic pain become less and less mobile and thus more and more isolated from social interactions. Thus, in this project, people learn how to meditate while they are physically active. People slowly walk on a self-directed treadmill surrounded by a 3D stereoscopic forest. As they learn to reach deeper meditative states, the abstract forest changes into a more realistic forest, and the fog clears up. Like sitting meditation, this form of meditation comes from a very long and rich tradition. Immersive VR is called immersive because it deeply engages a person's visual, auditory, and tactile senses. This sensory immersion is heightened because the simulated environment is interactive, both directly and through biofeedback. VR provides new ways for chronic pain sufferers to learn how to modulate or control their experience of pain. What people learn in VR is reinforced by computer applications that are being developed widely accessible by computers, laptops, and smartphones. Immersive virtual reality has been proven to be an effective way to alleviate pain. The work you've seen here is innovative because it addresses a silent but growing need, chronic pain, pain that affects one in five of us.